because I, I finished writing Fire, and Fire was very difficult emotionally. It's kind of a dark book, introspective. I myself in my own life was going through turmoil because I had just gotten my deal for bracelet and I was terrified all the time. Mm -hmm. And Fire is also terrified, so together we were, you know, really scared. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I finished writing Fire, and I was just like, oh my goodness, the next book has to be lighter. I have to, it can, I have to make it light and funny, and it can't be, it be so deep and heavy. But in order to make up for that, I want to make the plot really complicated so it's interesting. So I intentionally set out to write a complicated plot, which I now learned is really not the best idea ever. Because my plots get complicated anyway, even when I set out to write a simple ones. So if I set out to write a complicated one, I'm in trouble. Plus, if you read Graceling, if you can just think for a moment, how am I going to write a light, funny book about a girl with her background? It's not really, that's part of working out here. So, at a certain point, maybe 100 or 150 pages into writing Bitter Blue, I realized that I had post-it notes all over the house. My book plan was just, a, you know, it was such a mess. I couldn't keep everything straight, so I really needed something that I, where I could change the pages around. So um, this is 90 pages long. Not every page has, looks like this. Some of the pages are just my handwriting, front and back. Some of the pages are just a few lines. Find an example just to prove that here's one. So each page is a plot point or a character or a theme that I want to make sure not to forget. And um, the funny thing is that I don't actually look at it very often because I write everything down because I'm really afraid I'm going to forget it and lose it. But then I don't. When I get to a, a scene, I generally know what it is I want to happen. But I do make myself, like, every time I start some major new thing, I make myself go through and read every word in this, which is so boring. <laughs> um, just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything important in the book. So I just wanted to show you that I only, this is the only copy. Um, I keep it in my fireproof, waterproof safe. <laughs> but I'm just keeping my eye on it closely while I'm on tour. But like I said, it's more of a security blanket than anything I could write. If I lost it, it would There might be a few things that I would have to switch around, but I would be able to finish the book. But no one else would be able to finish the book based on it. It doesn't make any sense to anyone but me. And I write by hand. So this is actually what I do on a daily basis every day. And lest anyone freak out, while I do keep this in the fireproof, waterproof safe, I also, every 30 or 40 pages, transcribe it to a Word document. So I, if I lost my notebook at any time, I would only lose 20 or 30 pages, which would be horrible, but it wouldn't be like losing 350 pages. So this is a fairly typical page. Um, can you guys see it back there? <laughs> it's crossed out means nope, no good. Um, and this is this is most recent pages in Bitter Blue. Each notebook takes about thirty or forty. What am I saying? Each notebook thirty or forty notebooks. Each each novel takes about four or five notebooks to write. And uh, I guess the point I want to get across is if you're writing on your computer, you don't have a record of all the mistakes you made or all the things you changed. But if you're writing on paper, you, it really shows that writing, at least for me, is about like trying things, making messes, trying to figure out, oh, I need my characters to do x, y, and z. How do I get them to do that? Oh, I'll try this. This might work. And then, no, that doesn't work. So then I go back and I cross it out and I start the next day. Um, writing is about writing the wrong thing like 15 times. And then when you suddenly get right to the point where you, every day when you go back and look at it, it still works. It's the best feeling ever. And it makes all the pain go away. <laughs> um, if I can write two pages, two full pages in one day, that's a good day. Even if I go back the next day and I cross it out. Here's what I, I'll show you the scene I've been writing since I started the tour um, on airplanes and stuff like that. It's just a really, really tricky scene. So as you can see, 
I've just been writing, and then I go back the next day and I say, no, that's, and, and here's this here, from here to here, I wrote that in one day, it took me three or four hours. This here, from that mark down, those four lines, that took me an entire day. Uh, but I think I've done the scene. I figured out the scene. <laughs> it's a really short scene, but I just had to keep writing it over and over again. Um, oh, and I'll have little things in here too, like I have my, I have planning pages that look neater. They're just, oh, here are some things I need to, I've thought of that I need to keep in mind. And here are some questions I have that I need to find the answers to, like, what are the ingredients of medieval bread? When were timepieces invented? Because I had some characters looking at a watch and talking about it, and then I was like, oh, wait a minute. What if watches were invented in, like, 1910? That wouldn't, it doesn't completely matter because I can fudge things. As long as I can make it realistic that they exist in my world, I can use them. But, you know, I once had a character, uh, something happened, and the language said suddenly it was as if everything was moving in slow motion. And then I was like, I don't think there was slow motion until there were movies. So I kind of had to change that wording. You know, that sort of thing pops up a lot. Could one cut be fatal if left unattended? Do stitched wounds bleed? There are a lot of injuries in my books. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky to have an uncle who's a surgeon and a wound specialist. So at my grandmother's funeral, me and I were like, off in the corner talking about like syphilis and frostbite. <laughs> he's very, you know, he's all he's all for it. He's a very game guy. So I'm just so lucky to have him as a resource, and I have other resources that I call upon constantly. So I just wanted to show you that, just so you could see, you know, where the book comes from. And now, if anyone has any questions.